First up on Ag Etc., Jennifer Latsky with High Plains Journal is joined by President of Farmer Direct Foods, Bob Morendo. Then she visits with Mike Tweedy from Indigo about a special offer following their Wheat Solutions Conference. Next, John Fellers with KSU explains research into shutting down the wheat streak mosaic virus. Then Stephen McLeod explains Kansas Farm Bureau's role in the Rural Broadband Initiative. And we'll end with Dan Mosier, the president of Angus Genetics. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hi, I'm Jennifer Latsky with High Plains Journal, and I'm here with Bob Mirando, president of Farmer Direct Foods. Bob, you are here today at the Indigo Wheat Solutions event, um, speaking to, to farmers about um, identity preservation, about uh, capturing that value of that quality. You know, over at Farmer Direct, you really look and understand the consumer demands today. And it is all about capturing that value that's being produced by your growers, but it's also about telling the grower's story um, to, the, right. to the people that are buying that. Expand on that a little bit more. So at Farmer Direct Foods, we're located in New Cambria, Kansas. We're owned by a group of cooperative farmers. Mm -hmm. So the reality is we have a trademarked identity assurance program, much like Indigo is trying to create with their new business structure. And what the value is, is being able to go from field to shelf and showing the actual farmers what practices are they using, sustainability, etc., and producing a very high quality wheat that you can deliver to the shelf and let the consumer know exactly where it came from, how it was grown, knowing that it was milled a certain way. We make stone ground whole wheat flour, so that's our whole product line. But it's really helping the consumer understand where does their food come from. And we see that more and more, this, you know, field to table, farmers, markets, everybody wants to understand where is this food coming from that I'm mm -hmm. buying. Okay. So a lot of it is telling that story and making sure you tell the story of the, the farmers um, who, who you work with. Maybe is there a, an example of, of an interaction with a consumer where you were able to share the farmer's story and they had that aha moment? Well, one of our largest customers is King Arthur Flour. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people understand King Arthur's very high quality, good company. And if you look at their website or if you go to Farmer Direct Foods, you'll actually see the entire farming process from planting through harvesting, through going through the mill. So it really helps those customers understand when they buy this flour, how was it manufactured? Where did it come from? And we actually have pictures of, you know, a dozen different farmers on those videos. So you know, it brings it closer to home for people. Okay. So the farm to table, it's, it's critical that you capture the information and, and you find value in that information, not just who grew it, but what field it was in, what right. was applied to that field, the history of that field. Um, you know, there's farmers that, that just say, well, I'm, I'm just growing wheat. I'm just growing yeah. wheat. It's yeah. nothing special, but there's value for that information, well, right? Well, there's definitely value. I think as a traditional farmer, they're always worried about yields. How many bushels am I going to produce? You know, half of all the wheat grown in Kansas, as they were discussing today, is exported around the world. So really, you know, what we're doing, and I'm telling you from the very seed to how much rainfall they mm -hmm. had that year, we have their plot data. And as we harvest that, whether it's on for farm storage or they bring it specifically to our elevator, the entire time we're tracking which farm that came off of all the way through the mill and we even code it onto the bag. So we know exactly what was produced by who. Great. Well, thank you so much. And um, I'm, again, I'm Jennifer Latsky. I'm with High Plains Journal. For stories like this and more, please visit us at www.hpj.com or read us in print um, at your local newsstand. Thanks again, Bob, oh, and you. we'll see you on the trail. Enjoyed it. Thanks. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ladskin with High Plains Journal, and I'm here with Mike Tweedy with Indigo. And today you had a, an offer before the, the farmers. Let's talk about the offer and what it, what it means for them. What's the pros and, and cons of the offer? Well, the thing that's very important to us at Indigo is that number one, we make growers profitable. And number two is that we provide them technology that will enable them to grow a crop in a more sustainable way. And then number three is connecting that grower with that buyer. And through that connection, we can, we can enable them to make more off of their crop. So the most important thing that's in the offer is the ability to redefine what basis means. Mm -hmm. um, basis means to them today that the supply and demand around the world or locally determines what their basis is going to be. Mm -hmm. They have no control over that basis should be defined as what your transportation cost is going to be. So we've redefined that mm -hmm. and we, we provide them with a fixed transportation cost from the farm to the delivery point and they know that at contract signing so it's locked in so they know how to uh, conduct their financials. The premium is also really important in the offer. The premium consists of two things. Uh, one is going to be on-farm storage, so if someone has bins, then we would like to utilize those bins. It, it enables us to identity preserve that grain okay. so that the buyer knows exactly what they're going to get versus buying off of a pile. And so we'll pay them six cents a month for three months guaranteed. Okay. So it's guaranteed 18 cents for three months of storage. Whether we utilize it for three months or we don't utilize it for three months, they're gonna get 18 cents. The other is a protein premium. Many Kansas wheat growers know exactly how to produce high quality, high protein wheat. The problem is they don't know what they're going to get for that at harvest. We enable them through the offer to know exactly what they're going to get based upon a protein scale starting at 10 and percent. The advantage to that is knowing what your protein is and if you know how to produce that then you can adjust for those or account for those inputs like if you needed a shot of nitrogen right at a certain time in order to get that protein bump then you can factor that into your financial analysis so those are some really important components of the offer that enable them to um, you know to take advantage and become more profitable and connect them with a buyer it's really what I'm, what I'm hearing is it's really more about taking wheat out of commodities and really capturing the value of that wheat. And yeah. That's correct. So we're, we're attempting to decommoditize a commoditized crop. Mm -hmm. By connecting the buyer with the grower and the grower with the buyer, mm -hmm. it takes that commoditization out of it and it enables them to identity preserve. It, 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 they don't lose the identity by, you know, by their grain going on top of a pile with everybody else's grain. The advantage to the buyer is they know exactly what they're buying mm -hmm. and they're willing to pay a premium to have that ability to buy a known crop and know exactly how it was grown. So it benefits both sides. Okay. Well, you have a long history in crops and, and with uh, companies that deal with crops and seeds and chemicals, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What enticed you about Indigo? What, what made you think, I'm going to sign on with these people, I trust these people, um, I like where they're going? Yeah, that's, uh, 
That's really an interesting question and it's an easy one to answer. And it's about the mission of the company. Those three things that I talked about, enabling growers to be more profitable, growing crops in a more sustainable way, and connecting growers with buyers and so consumers know where their product is coming from. There's no other company out there that, that has that as their mission. And everybody in our company, as a, and it's a very fast growing company, but everybody in our company is aligned behind that mission. And it's a noble one and it's a just one. And if we do it right, and if we accomplish the goals that we have set forth, then we have the ability to help change agriculture. We can be that change agent. And so uh, that's probably the reason why I'm here and probably why I'll never leave. Okay. So part of what you do is, is working with farmers and building that trust. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you say to them when they say, I don't know, this is, this is really new. I'm a, I'm a little nervous about this. How do you build that trust? How do you show them that this way has some, some benefits for them? Well, you build trust by being trustworthy. You do what you say that you're going to do, and then you go above and beyond that. Um, one, and it is a very difficult thing for a grower that's been doing the same thing essentially for their entire lives and then generations even. And it's hard to make that change. So we work with growers to show them exactly what they're going to get. But the other thing that we do that probably not too many companies do is that when we change the offer to make it better, mm -hmm. even if it might be mid-season, we make those retroactive to everybody that's already entered into a contract with us and neighbors talk to neighbors. Mm -hmm. If there's ever a decision to be made with regard to the offer and working with a grower, we always err on the side of the grower, whether it's to our benefit or not. Because if they're not happy and if they're not achieving that higher profit margin that we work toward, then we're not achieving our mission. So those are the most important things in, in garnering that trust. Great. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Uh, for stories like this and more, uh, please visit us at www.hpj.com. Again, I'm Jennifer Latsky with High Plains Journal with Mike Tweedy of Indigo, and we'll see you on the trail. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron with American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide Radio and TV, the all new Better Horses Network. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. This particular virus is wheat streak mosaic virus. This virus in the last year caused a 10% yield loss across Kansas. So if you put that in numbers, it's about $30 million just in losses to the virus. So what we did is that when the virus infects the plant, it goes into the plant and the virus is a very simple organism, but it needs proteins so that it can replicate. If it doesn't have those proteins, then it can't re replicate and the plant is resistant. So what we did is we found a gene inside the plant 
that does the basic thing. It starts the process of making protein. And what we did is we went in and we cut the cord. And what happens is we put that gene on a wanted, dead or alive poster inside the plant. And by doing that, the plant recognizes that gene inside the plant and it chews it up. There's no protein, it doesn't replicate. So the, the patent itself is all about how we shut that gene off. We've tested these plants now against wheat street mosaic virus, triticum mosaic virus, which are the two biggest ones. And we've also tested it about against Barty yellow dwarf. It's, it's another virus that causes extreme losses in Kansas and in the Great Plains. And it turns out this particular technique will uh, lower virus concentrations in the plant for Barley yellow dwarf, but it also prevents wheat street and triticum mosaic from replicating. By using gene editing technology or mutagenesis, we can speed up the process of getting this gene to the Kansas farmers through uh, classical plant breeding, say five to 10 years using these types of processes. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses in rodeos and my shoulders took such a beating and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery. And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. My name is Stephen McLeod. I'm from Harvey County. I live north of Newton. Uh, I serve on the Kansas Farm Bureau Board of Directors representing the 4th District. In our case, in my district, which is the 4th District of, of Kansas Farm Bureau, we have the largest of the counties, that being Sedgwick County, all the way down to among the smallest. So we have an extremely wide range of, of population. In fact, we have the city of Wichita within our district. Therefore, um, the grassroots, the development of our political endorsements is very important in our district because we have the urban and we have the really ultra rural. So it's very interesting to see how it all comes together. I am uh, certainly proud of our history, but I think sometimes we lose track of the fact that, you know, that heritage is what propels us to the future. Um, sometimes the further back we look we can, is the further ahead in the future we can look at. Some of the problems that we face today, uh, for example, an issue that I've been working on quite a bit is the rural broadband, the rural communication issue. Um, you know, I've heard some equate that back to the rural electrification of the 1930s. Today's world, that is an entirely uh, similar comparison because um, that really is vital in the rural areas today. So I think as we look back in our history, we see certain milestones that have come along in that regard, yet we're facing somewhat the same today. You know, sometimes the more, thing, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I live in an area that is, I am not in a remotely rural area. I'm only three miles out of town, yet I am in one of the, those areas that is underserved um, be, by way of rural broadband and our cellular service. We're just kind of in a hole. Perhaps I'm biased, but I am of an opinion that we've got a lot of work to do. And therefore, I think the work that KFB and other organizations are doing is, is long overdue. Just one voice, one, one at a time, 
perhaps doesn't garner the attention that it should. It doesn't mean that that message is any less important. Whereas if we say, speak as a, as a unified, as one voice, as a larger group, I think perhaps we draw more attention to the issues, to the, to the causes that we seek to promote. And I will do everything I can and have done everything that I can to continue to move that forward at a very rapid pace. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Beef market demands and cow herd environmental demands. Are they at odds with each other? The president of Angus Genetics Incorporated says no. I think one of the, the things that's important to emphasize is it's not an either or sort of a thing that, that there are Angus cattle that will you know, certainly do very well for, for, a, for a combination of traits that, that are favorable for, for marbling, other measures of carcass merit, carcass weight, growth performance in the feedlot, yet, yet they're still efficient in, in the cow herd, that they're, they're fertile, they have longevity. But it's a matter of collecting that data and then as producers are buying bulls or making genetic selection decisions, to taking all that information into account and so they truly are finding the animals with favorable combinations. The ideal cow has changed over time because the markets have changed over time. There was a time when, when all calves that were the same color and weighed the same, brought the same amount. Now we're seeing more emphasis on sort of specification feeder cattle and documenting those genetic differences. Uh, producers are reaping a reward for having cattle that have more gain potential, have more marbling potential. Uh, but sometimes that has an impact on the cow herd that produces those. Mosier also says there are ways to keep cow size down without sacrificing carcass weight. Marbling doesn't have to improve at the expense of other traits. The, the idea of, uh, of finding that balance doesn't mean we don't improve both simultaneously. And there's great examples of, of where we have addressed some of those challenges. Uh, you know, birth weight versus yearling weight. Uh, there was a time when it was thought that we couldn't simultaneously improve both of those, and, and we've done that. You know, there's, no, there's no question today. But it was a matter of having the data points, having the, the, the database of birth weights as well as yearling weights, and finding the bulls that were outliers and, and propagating those. 
The American Angus Association plans to release more selection tools in the future, leaning on programs like Maternal Plus and technology like DNA to get more information into the database. I'm Bob Cervera. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.